Author and activist Helen Keller wrote, walking with a friend in the dark is better than walking alone in the light. We come together from near and far to celebrate our graduating students as they complete the final steps on this part of their educational journey. We celebrate their accolades and achievements, their contributions and connections, their patience and perseverance, their resilience and resolve. We celebrate these and all of their family, friends, faculty, and staff who have walked with them on their journey. Welcome to all of our 2021 masters and doctoral candidates. I know that this virtual on-demand ceremony was not your or our first choice. Certainly, we wanted to be together, sharing each other's company and sharing in the joy of your experience. But this virtual on-demand ceremony provides the greatest health benefit to our community while also allowing you to share this special moment with the people that you love your family and friends. And that is really what's most important. There's nothing more important than the health and safety of our students and their families. The faculty, staff, and students, and all of our graduates have been absolutely magnificent during this COVID pandemic. Amidst anxiety, life-altering challenges, and behaviors, and enormous difficulties. You've all acted with forethought and courage. You've acted with diligence and a desire to protect the health and safety of every individual. You have accomplished some great things. And amidst all of that, you've also reached a most important milestone. Perhaps this milestone is even more significant given the immense challenges that each and every one of you have faced both in your studies, but also in your lives. Allow me to be the first to salute your achievement, your diligence, your character, and your perseverance. The families of today's graduates have supported and loved you through every step of the journey, through good times and bad, and in countless ways, they've nurtured your success on this most important day. So for this and so much more, thank you to all the families of our graduates. I'd also like to salute our outstanding faculty. They've taught and mentored you. They've helped you reflect and act. They've helped you engage, not just with your studies, but with your future and your careers. And they're never, never allow you to stop learning about this incredible world. So to our faculty, we thank you. And finally, our dedicated staff, who through great effort and passion serve as educators and role models for our students, making this Maryville community a very special place. There's one more group of people whose devotion and service to Maryville requires special mention, and that's our Board of Trustees. These men and women generously give of their time, their talent, and their treasure for the advancement of Maryville on all fronts. And to our Board of Trustees, we say thank you. Finally, we have a number of our graduates, our alumni, our family and friends who are or who have actively served as members of the United States Armed Forces. Since December 7th, 1941, these men and women have defended this country and gave their all. And to our veterans, we say thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, saved as that star spangles banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Lizzie, for singing the national anthem so beautifully. Lizzie is an aspiring teacher studying in the School of Education here at Maryville University. Good afternoon, cohort eight. And good afternoon to all your families and friends. My name is Kevin Stokes, and I'm the program director for all PK-12 leadership courses in the School of Education at Maryville University. I should like to welcome you and your families and friends to this convocation ceremony. On behalf of Keith, Kathy, Jack, Nick, and Tracy, I would like to congratulate all of you on your many achievements as you have progressed through your seven semesters here at Maryville. Looking at you on the screen this afternoon, I can see the joy and relief that you have made it to this magnificent moment. You should be proud of yourselves, and I'm sure that those with you today and those watching from near and from far are cheering loudly for you. I think it's safe to say that when you attended your first classes in January 2019, that you assumed that Thursday evenings for seven semesters would include a journey to and from Maryville's campus. You anticipated that you would be sitting in a classroom with a professor who would be leading you through your work. Little did we know how different teaching and learning would become from 2020. Neither did we perhaps realize the benefits that would come from working in a virtual world in our pajamas and learning the language of Zoom. You're muted. We can't hear you. I'm going to share my screen. I don't know how you chop a screen up and share it. I'm going to put you in a breakout room. It's kind of like I'm going to help you to escape from Alcatraz. The determination that you have shown to complete your doctorate in education under these circumstances, whilst balancing the many new demands being placed upon you at school, life with your families and friends is to be both admired and applauded. As a cohort, you rallied together to ensure that all of you would reach this moment today no student would be left behind in cohort eight. In a little while, you will be hooded and you will be able to strut your stuff in all of your regalia as a doctor of education. I have to tell you that this is not the end, but the beginning of the next phase of your professional life. The title of doctor brings with it great responsibility and never more so than now. In 1734, Alexander Pope, an English poet, I had to bring a little England to the proceedings, wrote that hope springs eternal in the human breast. As we move forward into the remainder of 2021 and beyond, I'm sure that we all have many hopes for the post-pandemic years to come, both personal and professional. As doctors of education in teacher leadership, you are duty bound to ensure that your hopes propel you into action, to provide leadership in our schools, to serve the needs of our students, their families and their communities better than ever before. 
I believe that in daring to hope, you have the determination, courage, and compassion to ensure that we look forward and consider the changes that must be made in our education systems based upon what we have learned in the last year. I believe that in daring to hope, you will make decisions that will push our schools forward in creating new ways for young people to be learners. I believe that these hopes will propel you to act decisively and rapidly to make them a reality. I know that you have created a powerful Cohort 8 network, and I hope that together you will be propelled to take advantage of the post-pandemic opportunities to ensure that all children in and around the Greater St. Louis area, and as far beyond as possible, have the best opportunities in their PK through 12 experiences. You have developed a powerful collective voice of hope. Use it every day. As President Obama said, hope is that thing inside us that insists, despite all the, contrary, all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us if we have the courage to reach for it and to work for it and to fight for it. So who are the voices of hope in this network called Cohort 8? I can assure everyone present that they made a lot of noise and I feel confident that they will continue to do so. Ashley will certainly be vociferous about science, technology, engineering and math education. And most importantly, she will be a wonderful role model for all girls who want to work in these fields, and especially for her newborn daughter. Christina acknowledges that she can no longer remain quiet in ensuring the socio-emotional needs of gifted students are met. The introvert has become more extrovert. Janika's passion for her work emanates from every pore in her body. She will never stop loving the students with whom she works, and one day she will be passing on that love to the colleagues that she will lead. Megan Wonji is never going to take no for an answer. She will be knocking on every door until everyone understands what it is that students on the autism spectrum need. Megan Tuji's effortlessly makes everyone feel valued and heard, just as if we were sitting on her front porch. She inherently understands that if students and teachers feel that they are part of something big, they will rise to whatever challenges are presented to them. Melissa entered the program a little unsure of herself, but she is exiting it knowing that she not only has the confidence, but also the power to bring about change in the way mathematics is taught. Nathan, the ultimate listener, with the invaluable ability to synthesize what he has heard and then make everyone understand what has been said even better. As a systems thinker, he molds the parts into the whole. Nelva has the uncanny knack of every great storyteller to make everyone listen to what she has to share about her work with English language learners and in so doing heightens our awareness of their needs. She is the guardian of their stories. Nick is not just the king of data, he is the emperor. Most importantly, he knows how to use it to advocate for changes to meet the needs of students. His love of data is only surpassed by his love for his two daughters born during this program. 
Rosalind, for whom service is at the core of her being. She places the needs of her students and her colleagues above her own. She understands that to serve, she has to rise up to the challenges of leading. Shay, whose wealth of experience from growing up and working in our urban schools has contributed so much to the breadth of understanding that this cohort has gained about the needs of the students she serves and loves every day. She is determined to leave a place better than she found it. And finally, Tori, who has learned that there is no glass ceiling for her. Mark your calendars for 2036, because that is when she intends to become the US Secretary of State for Education. Put all of these people into a cocktail shaker, give it a little shake to make sure they're awake, and you will be pouring out a fabulous team. It has been a pleasure and a privilege to work with all of you. We are incredibly proud of you all and full of hope for what you will achieve now that you are to become doctors of education, teachers as leaders. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Michelle Shappy, Dean of the School of Education, who will lead your hooding ceremony. It is my honor as your dean to call your names as we celebrate your accomplishment. As a reminder, when I call your name, your video will go live and take over the screen so that we may all see you receive your hood. Please have your friends or family members on standby, ready to place your hood once your video appears on the screen so that we may celebrate together. Christina Berwin. Thank you to Mike for always being my cheerleader, always being in my corner, and always being proud of what I'm doing and trying to accomplish in life. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you to Emma and Ava for understanding that I couldn't always go to everything over the past few years, and sometimes I needed things to be a little quieter around the house. Um, I love you both. And thank you to all my family and my friends who um, have been along on this journey with me. I couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Shaniqua Monique Blanchard. I want to start by dedicating this degree to my grandmother and grandfather for instilling the importance of education in my life from the very beginning. Next, I would like to thank the rest of my family. You all have been instrumental in making sure that I accomplished this goal that I set for myself so long ago. Next, I would like to thank my friends. You all have been supporting me and reminding me to be great, and I appreciate it. So I wanna say to all of you, thank you. Nelver Jean Brooks. I'm thankful to God for carrying me through. I'm thankful to family and friends for their encouragement and support. I'm especially thankful to my grandma, Elmira, and I'm thankful to myself as well for staying the course. Megan Marcel. Bruner.
When I think about today, I realize how much bigger today really is. Yes, I want to give thanks for today, but I also want to give thanks for all the hard times that led up to today and all the people that supported me throughout my journey. Those hard times make me appreciate moments like today. So thank you, Mom, for singing this song at night to remind me not to worry. And thanks, Dad, for making me order at Dairy Queen so that I can find my voice. Thank you, Jeremy, for giving me the courage and support and being there with me day after day. And thank you to all the other people in my life that I love and learn from. And it's been all of the emails, calls, letters, hikes, and walks that make me grateful and keep me going. Thank you. Nicholas William Ebner. I first want to thank uh, my beautiful wife, Jennifer, for just the uh, abundance of love, support, and sacrifice over these last two years to give me the opportunity to chase a dream that's so important to me. And then to thank my two beautiful baby girls, Aubrey and McKenna, uh, for sharing your daddy with his schoolwork and his homework for the last two years, or McKenna's case, the last month. Thank you, and I hope I'm an example of what it looks like to uh, just chase your dreams. And finally, to my family, thank you for just always loving and supporting me. And to everyone at McClure who helped to inspire and work on this work with me and always giving me an opportunity to be the best teacher possible, thank you. Victoria Fallis. Congratulations, Cohort 8. I can't believe our two and a half year journey has already come to an end. I thank each and every one of you. To my son, Jack, thank you for eating Domino's pizza almost every Thursday night for two and a half years or having your grandmother drive you around where you need to be. I'd like to thank my mother who was the inspiration for my degree. I am so proud to be following in your footsteps in education. To my husband, Eddie, without you, I could not have done this and never even would have applied. I thank you for all your support all your editing of my papers, and all your love. I love you all. Congratulations. Megan Hetz. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to my husband and my beautiful daughters. Uh, you guys have been um, my strongholds and my inspiration for uh, completing this program and wanting to um, expand my craft. Um, I'd like to thank the teachers at Maryville for always giving us um, great feedback and uh, leading us in the right direction. I'd also like to thank my original teachers, my 12 siblings. All of you guys, I watched you like hawks uh, the whole time you were growing up. I don't know if you knew that. Um, the teachers that I work with, you guys were my resources, you guys helped me with my action research, and you were the core of what I was studying um, and everybody in the buildings. And then my friends, Jana, Jill, and Angie. Thank you so much, everyone. Rosalind Hollins Lewis. Class of 2021, wow, I made it. It is with gratitude. I say thank you to my family, my cohort, and my crew. I appreciate you going on this journey with me. Melissa Hunsacker Schaefer. I have a couple of people that I would like to thank for helping me get through this program. First, I would like to thank my husband for his endless support while taking care of the house, our dogs, and our life while I was busy working. 
Second, I would like to thank my family for their love and guidance that helped me through this process. Third, I would like to thank my in-laws for their much needed distractions and support during this process. And last, I would like to thank my cohort. This experience was amazing because of you guys. I've learned so much and grown so much with your story, support, and love. From the bottom of my heart, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. Janika Hutchinson. First, I would like to thank God. Thank you for all the grace and mercy that you have shown on my life. I'm forever humbled and grateful. Neil, thank you for believing in my greatness and helping me aspire to things beyond what I even could think for myself. Mom, Dad, for all that you are and for all that you helped me to become, I thank you deeply. Micah, Genesis, what wouldn't I do to make you proud? I love you so much. Thank you for believing in me. To my tribe, my family, for all the prayers and for everything that you have given me in motivation and strength, I love you so. Nathan Jones. I want to start by thanking my wife and my children, Elizabeth, Benjamin, Hayden, Lucas, and Emery. I know this doctoral program has taken up a lot of my time. I very much appreciate your patience as I worked my way through the program. I'm so grateful for you and I love you all so much. I would also like to thank all the professors that taught me throughout this program. I can honestly say I enjoyed every single one of my professors and every single one of my classes. I specifically would like to thank Dr. Strecker for all the help he provided on the capstone and Dr. Stokes, who was a constant inspiration, always reminding me to think about and communicate to others why I do what I do. Finally, I would like to thank every single member of cohort eight. You have all taught me more than you will ever know and I'm forever grateful. Ashley McGaw. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my village. Those people that have been with me on this journey for the last two and a half years. You know who you are. You know how special you are to me. You're like my bookends. You catch me when I lean forward. You catch me when I lean backward. You're encouraging words to keep going, watching my son, saying we don't give up. You got this. Just take a break today. Pick it back up. Just all of the encouraging words. I have to say thank you to my village, Dr. Ashley McGuire. At this time, Sherry Pfister, our Vice President for Academic Affairs, will confer your degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the Maryville University faculty, I confer upon you the appropriate degrees as have been completed or will be completed and invest in you all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. On behalf of everyone at Maryville University, I hope that you have enjoyed this celebration of your achievement. We want you to stay in touch with us and share with us all your future accomplishments and to bring your expertise back to the School of Education as its alumni. We will miss you on Thursday evenings and think of you taking that evening to relax and enjoy yourselves. Congratulations, everyone in cohort eight. According to philosopher and spiritual teacher, the Buddha, health is the greatest gift. Contentment, the greatest wealth. Faithfulness, 
the best relationship. As we conclude this celebration, we send you forth with the following blessings. May you have success and fulfill your career ambitions. May you have strength to overcome all obstacles. And may you have health, living a long and happy life. May you have family and friends, faithful companions on your journey. And may you have contentment, the only wealth that gives you peace. Congratulations, Maryville graduates.